Okay, I think my voice has woken up just a little bit here this morning. And if you think this is full now, you should have seen it when it first came off the coffee maker. I've already sipped it down quite a bit. Uh, no. Normally, I don't like to use my metal alligator clips when I'm, uh, really get my glasses on here so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, I don't like to use the metal alligator clips on plastic. However, these are, uh, Okay, these are hard to hold on to. <laughs> okay, so these pegs that I'm grabbing hold of here, well, um, they're going to be stuck down in the holes anyway, so I'm not too worried if they get marks on them. No. Oh, sure, it's the wrong way around here. Okay, I'm going to want to be getting at this little tiny pedestal thing that's coming up off of the side here as well as, well, I am going to be putting the macro lens on so you can see what's going on. Um, yeah, we've got to put two of these little round thingies. I, I, you know what? Let me get one out here. Okay, these things here. Now, that give you a perspective. Yeah, we got to get two of those mounted on these today. Uh, not just two of them, like we've got to get uh, 12 of them mounted on. I'm just going to do one on camera and then I'll do the other five and get them done. And it'll be the same thing when I do the photo etch on, on this, one of these. I'll just do one and then I'll do the other three, two off camera. Um, okay, let me just reset up here and try and figure out exactly how I'm going to do this. Now I will be putting the macro lens on in a minute here. But you'll notice that if I can get the light just right, that on one side of this, there's a little indentation in the center, and on the other side there isn't. So that means that when I try to put it on the side like this, I want to take advantage of the fact that there's a little indentation there. Or, when we get it, try to put it on the top of the of this pedestal here. Now, maybe I don't have the angle right. It pinged off, but that's okay. You can see it there. I didn't lose it. Okay, we are repositioned. And I just noticed here that our light has actually flipped around the wrong way. It should actually be over the other way. I don't know if I could get it to turn or not. Well, we'll get it later. Because this part here where the control wheel goes on, <clears throat> excuse me, is supposed to be at the back of the light. And this is where the, where the light would come out. So we're, we're going to have to change that. Maybe it'll go this way better. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now it's the right way around. Okay, so we're going to have to uh, readjust here just a little bit. You know, I think there might be something on my on my tweezer here, maybe a little bit of masking tape or something. I just want just want to get it just on the edge there like that. Now don't squeeze too hard because it'll it'll ping out. Now we are just doing a dry run here. Maybe be better if I did a wet run. Got to put a little drop of something just on the top there. Well, we know that extra thin doesn't work with photo etch, so we're pretty well limited to CA. If I was to use any other kind of glue, it would just smother it. So I. Okay. Aww. 
Yeah. Okay, it's going to work. Now, uh, I think I'll use... Uh, see if I can get just a very minute amount of CA, uh, my, my thinned out medium. I think that would work good if I could just put just a little tiny bit on, on this uh, little peg here. Okay, there is some on there. That's probably enough. Now I've cleaned off the end of my tweezer here with the rubbing alcohol, isopropyl. And uh, Okay, that looks pretty good. My my feeling is I want to kind of poke on the top of it, but I know that if I do, I'm probably going to knock it crooked. And so let me, let me look on the monitor here and see how this looks. I'm going to leave well enough alone here. Okay, probably five minutes or so has passed here now. And I think if we turn this on its side... It should not fall off. Okay, I'm going to just have to readjust a little bit because I want gravity to be my friend and I'll put a, another one right here. doesn't look right. No, it's not. Better get it off of there before it before it cures. Might have to soak this in solvent and Yeah, see it's sticking on my tweezer there. That's not good. Yeah, that's way more than I needed, but it's hard to get it to stay just on the top of that peg. I'm trying to pick this up a little bit differently this time. Now, be careful. Oops. Dropped it. Okay, we'll try it this way. There. Don't touch it. I notice there's a little tiny hair right here, but we'll get that later. About uh, 10 minutes has passed here. I don't think our little wheel is going to fall off. I'm noticing the one on the pedestal part is not quite level, but uh, all right, let's see what we can do here. Maybe this hole is too big. I'm going to have to find something different, I guess. I wanted to set it up and turn it around and... Yeah. Okay, I think we got it. Let's slip on the macro lens. Now, when I do little parts like this, I am very happy that I did not buy a detailing kit because those detailing kits... You know, there's just a, 
a ton of little stuff like this. You know, if you're good at this sort of thing, well then, yeah, go for it, because it makes quite a difference. I was just looking at a, uh, uh, a model of the HMS hood that one of my Facebook friends in Australia did, and uh, he has just completed it. And uh, he did it in uh, 1350 scale, but because he used a detailing kit, it looks fantastic. And uh, he's going to be starting on the uh, 1-200 scale of the USS Arizona. Now, I had uh, entertained the idea of getting the Arizona before I got the, uh, the Bismarck, because uh, I liked all the detail that was on it. Um, it looked like it was a very interesting ship. Um, yeah, anyway, he's going to be doing that ship. I think he's going to be uh, videoing it and putting it on his channel. So, um, yeah. And uh, 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 Peter, if you're listening, I hope you're going to be doing the detailing kit. Um, mind you, it's up to you. Whatever you, uh, <laughs> you know, you do what, 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 what makes it fun for you. I mean, that's what I'm doing. I'm not doing the detailing kit because I realized that if I did it, I'd be a little bit, well, I don't know if I'd be stressed out, but uh, I just wouldn't enjoy it as much. Anyway, I think this looks okay. I'm noticing that the, like I mentioned, the the, the uh, wheel that's on the pedestal is not quite level. However, you got to use a macro lens to see that it's just not quite right. Yeah. Okay, enough twisting around here. Okay, I think I have this figured out. One of these has to be bent in such a way that it will hook over top of these four protrusions that are coming out the side. Then one of these discs gets mounted on this part here that you see sticking out that I'm just almost touching here. Um, yes, like I said, I'm glad I did not buy the detailing kit. <laughs> I'm not stressed out. Uh, I'm, in, I'm sort of enjoying this. Now this little piece is designed in such a way that I do believe it will bend better one way than the other. And I think the lines are on the other side of it. So we need to just turn over here. There we go. Okay, now you can see I've got paint on there. But I'm pretty, yeah, I can sort of see the lines where, where the indentation is right here and right here. And that's the way it's supposed to bend. However, it is so small that I don't think Andy's photo itch bender was even going to work on that. But we'll, we'll give it a try and see what happens. Let's crank this all the way down here. See how much of it will go underneath. Oh, it might work. Okay, we'll just raise it up just a little bit here. Maybe I can use my my knife here to just slide it in place. Just going just a little bit here. Kind of sorry I got paint on that now, but but I can see where it's supposed to bend. I'll clamp it down. No. Where's my razor blade here? Try 
try and do it so you can see what's happening. I'm wondering if it's going to be sort of binding there now. I don't want to Going to be breaking it off. Maybe I should release it a bit. Let it let it work its way back out. If you know what I mean. Okay. How does that look now? Does that look like it's more or less 90 degrees? No. It's it's got to bend more than that. I'm wondering maybe if the photo etch bender might work, or uh, the, the Tamiya uh, bending pliers. Um, yeah, I'll just give that a try. Probably won't be able to do it on camera though. Yeah, it's got to be bent just a, a little bit more. Okay, even the photo etch pliers are a little bit on, you might say, the coarse side. A little bit too heavy duty, but here's a thought I had. What if I was to grab hold of it with a tweezer and then twist on it like this? Okay, now it's a little bit more of well, that snap you heard. That wasn't this thing breaking. That was my spotlight expanding from the heat. <laughs> Now you wouldn't think LEDs would get hot, but they, they don't get real hot. I mean, you don't get burnt if you touch them. Okay, let's see if I can't grab hold of this other little wing and bend it over. Probably going to have to grab it off camera here. Okay, I, I do believe I've got it here. Just so let me check the monitor and make sure you'll be able to see it here. Oh yeah, okay. Now, are these going to need to be squeezed together a little bit? Or uh, should I maybe just uh, try it on a part? Probably have to reposition here. I don't know why I have this need to do everything on camera, but it's kind of fun for me. Okay, let's get this turned over here if we can. Whoops. Oh, no. oh, Come on, Ron. How hard can this be? All right, now. I'm steady my hand here as best I can. problem. This thing's going to keep moving around. You know what, I'm going to have to probably mount this piece in the helping hands so that I can take this and try and pressure fit it over top of one of these. I think you know what I'm trying to say here. Um, yeah. Okay, you're seeing it as it's happening, so to speak. Now, first of all, I was having a problem figuring out how I was going to be able to grab onto this in such a way that these four little things that come out the sides are going to be easy, easy to get at. So it, the helping hands were kind of out here. However, I, I noticed that I could take and wedge this, this part on my pointing stick, and if I push down carefully, it actually stayed on there pretty good. Problem is the pointing stick is way too long because I wanted to mount it in my vise. 
which you'll see. So I didn't want to shorten my pointing stick because I, I like it the length it is. So I went down to my workshop and I got a, uh, a dowel here. This is quarter inch. I believe this one here is, is five sixteenths. And uh, all I need is As you can see, I'm not prepared. Okay, I just need uh, a small amount of it here. Now I know I'm getting sawdust on this thing, but I have vacuumed this thing off many, many times. I really didn't need to do that, did I? Now this portion of the model ship is for Tennessee Jim. Yeah, a woodworking segment. Okay, once again, that little crack you heard, that wasn't this. <laughs> okay, that was my spotlight cooling down. <laughs> get myself lined up here. Okay, here's our little tiny piece. We haven't lost it yet. And I'm just going to sort of do a dry run here pretending I've got it. I guess that's going to be in my way there. Okay, I'll take the little piece and I'll be able to steady my hand. Maybe it would be better if I was to steady my hand like this. Okay. Yeah, that should work. Now since I shot that last scene, something came up. So I've got to cut today's episode off. Thanks for watching, and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.